Generics are a programming language concept. They allow you to write typed code without being linked explicitly to a particular type. Let's look at how and why languages support generics, using Symfony components as an example. The topic will be introduced by Karim Pinchin, a back-end developer for around 12 years. As he states, sharing knowledge is fundamental for his kind of job. He is susceptible to security, authentication, and electronic signatures. Karim, the stage is yours. Well, thank you. Um, it seems there is uh, already an issue with um, the network. Uh, now it works, yeah. Well, uh, sorry for being a little bit late. So, um, first of all, Jean Dobre. <laughs> this is the, the last, the, the, the only uh, Polish word I have. So the following will be in English. Um, I'm so happy to be here to talk about uh, generics in PHP. First of all, I will introduce myself. Uh, my name is Karim Pinchon. Uh, I'm a French backend developer since 15 years. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, on Mastodon, on whatever, uh, with KPN13. Um, I write a little blog, but it's only in French, in, in French, so sadly it won't be so much interested for you. And you can find the following slides on slides.com slash KPN13 when the network uh, works. I work for a French company called Fox Intelligence. Uh, we build a software to allow customers uh, to have some data about e-commerce and make some analysis about it uh, for, I don't know, um, see the market shares of uh, any product or customers and, um, and growth index and so on. Well, um, generics, what is it? Um, generics allow you to um, Customize the type uh, you use uh, inside your class uh, for the variable, uh, interface, trait, and so on. Um, it can allow you to write type code, but without specifically uh, bound to a type. So um, you can have some flexibility on type, and this is quite uh, interesting. Also, you can think as um, a kind of abstraction layer on top of the type system of PHP. The benefits of using generics are the following. Uh, depending on the language, you will have no cast to do or no uh, documentation. You know in PHP the at uh, var, for example. Um, it will allow you to optimize your code sometimes um, by writing less code, and so by writing less code, you will have mm, less code to maintain. So this is uh, also quite uh, important. And by using types where sometimes you do not use types, it, it will increase the security of your code. But there is some drawbacks, of course. Um, it is not a so easy notation, and it could be, it could be sometimes difficult to understand and to read and to write. And we can ask uh, the question about the runtime performance. Uh, is it uh, impact? Is, is there an impact of uh, using generics? So we will try to answer to this question for PHP at least. And what we can say about generics generally is uh, it is an important advanced concept of a lot of programming language. Uh, it could be uh, native um, often, like for example in Java, Go, Rust, and so, uh, so many more. And it is always a highly awaited feature in any um, developer communities uh, for every language. Well, uh, let's talk about use case of generics. Um, the first use case, of course, we think when we think about generic is collection. As developer, we always um, deal with object and with collection of objects. And uh, we used to write this kind of code. Uh, so this is a very simple implementation of a collection class um, with uh, two simple methods, push and pop, without any type. Uh, because like that, like that, I can use any, uh, I, I can use this class uh, for any type of, uh, of object. But uh, the drawbacks here is that I can push uh, 
almost uh, what uh, almost everything I want uh, in my collection, and I'm not sure it is really safe to do that because when I will pop an item, um, I don't really know what I get. So this is not perfect, of course. Uh, one more advanced uh, implementation and safe, safer implementation is what we call a type collection. So we will uh, set uh, the type uh, the collection should handle in the constructor, and then uh, at the runtime we will check if the item we try to push in the collection uh, will be the type we want to. So uh, by doing that, uh, we will be sure that when we pop an element, we will have what we expect. So this is really safer. But here the drawback is that um, any tools, um, IDE or static code analyzer, won't be able to uh, help us with autocompletion and so on, and warn uh, us if we have some bugs here. So this is not perfect too. A third possibility of implementation is um, to write a specific collection class for a type. Here I have a doc collection, and by this I can uh, type int and write type kind of everywhere in my class, and just be sure uh, to handle only what I want. And I will have auto-completion. My tools will understand what I get, etc. So this is uh, really safer. But the drawbacks is, if I need now a cat collection, I will need to write, again, this kind of same class. And uh, so we will have a lot of code to write, and probably a lot of duplicated code. So this is not perfect, neither. A second use case uh, we have uh, for generics is to use as utility uh, method or function. Here is a really silly uh, add uh, method, which will do the sum between um, two parameters. Um, it will work for integ either integer, float, even array, etc. Uh, this code is perfectly OK PHP speaking. PHP speaking, um, but we have absolutely no clue of uh, what dollar result will be. Um, well, we will have um, um, really no security at all here and no help uh, for by the by the IDE. And the third and the last um, use case I see um, is to use uh, when we use factories when we need to build some complicated object depending on, depending on some condition. We used to um, write this kind of uh, code. Of course, this is really simple, but uh, sometimes it could be uh, a lot um, harder to write. Uh, here, I can give as an argument the fully qualified class name um, of a class. And, and I know, as a developer, that I will have, as a result, the object uh, um, I want. But again, my tools uh, will not be able to help me at all here and detect any bugs. <coughs> so now, let's look around. Uh, in the other language, how do they deal with generics? I think it is always a good thing to write uh, to, to see um, what the others do. In fact, uh, a lot of languages uh, have generics. I put some uh, example, but uh, there, is there are probably more. And I, um, I was looking for uh, any convention around um, regardless the language. And there is, in fact, some convention. And uh, we used to uh, define generics with an uppercase uh, letter, uh, often uh, T and so on. And more often, in fact, uh, T with the name of an interface or a class. A class. So um, regardli regardless the language. Well, uh, let's see with some real concrete example. Uh, first, in Golang, here you have a simple method which uh, take a map or int of or int and float or float, sorry, and do the sum of all the elements uh, of the map and return this element. So, if I give uh, him, if I give him a map of integer, I will have an integer as result and float and so on. Um, so the notation is the following. You have the name of the function. And in square bracket, uh, I will define the generic. So uh, I have, first of all, a k, which is a comparable. And uh, we have a v, which could, be, which could be an integer or a float. In parameter, I will have my map, which use 
the, the template I use for generic, so K as a type of key, and V as a type of value. And it will return a V, so the same, va the same type as the m there is in my map. And for calling uh, that method, I will, can, I will uh, set the, um, the type uh, between the square bracket, and I give, in, uh, give it my uh, map. If I mess with some declaration and I gave a map of float um, for the first uh, in the first uh, line, the program won't compile at all. So I have a real safe uh, uh, security here. Uh, here a Java example. Um, I define a template uh, a generics uh, T between the angle bracket. Um, on the box declaration, and then I can use my identifier T uh, kind of everywhere I need it in my um, in my class. And for instantiating my class, I just set uh, the type I want uh, to handle uh, in angle bracket. Uh, here I can just define my generics at uh, method level and not at the class level, and then I use it. Uh, uh, like I, like I want, as I want. Um, a quick TypeScript example. <coughs> um, again, the same the same kind of notation with angle uh, bracket, and define uh, for defining my template, and then I can use my template everywhere. So I go kind of fast. And a last really uh, simple example in Rust. Uh, you can see uh, same kind of notation again. So, now, how does it work in PHP? This is what uh, interesting us. Um, sorry to disappoint you, but PHP doesn't have any generics, uh, and will probably never add generics. Uh, because um, Nikita Popov, uh, the, the man who developed a lot the type system in PHP, um, studies the possibility to add generics in the PHP code base, and he, became to the, he came to the conclusion that it will be either too complicated to um, code this in the PHP code base, either too costly, memory, mem memory speaking, uh, for PHP. And I think we don't want uh, to, be, uh, to decrease the memory performance of PHP. So, uh, in fact, there is no good solution. Um, if you want some uh, technical details about um, about this uh, uh, about this, uh, he wrote some uh, GitHub issue and uh, a Reddit post to explain how uh, why uh, this is this will be very difficult. So, what do we do if we need to have some flexibility? Well, we can try to stop typing uh, our code. Um, but it's kind of uh, back to the past. Um, here I have just a simple identity function, and it uh, only returns what I give him, what I give him in parameter. So it works perfectly with integer, string, and so on. But if I analyze that with a static code analyzer uh, like um, PHP Stan, uh, it it will it will it will uh, scream at me um, because. He has no clue to um, see what the type uh, of uh, dollar result will be. Uh, so I have here no safety, and in fact, it doesn't answer really uh, to the to the to our problem. So what about mixed type? Mixed type is the top type um, since PHP 8, and uh, it's it's um, kind of uh, the union of all these types. So why don't don't we use mixed for type hinting and so on? So exactly the same the same function, but with mix now. And in fact, uh, PHP stan is uh, not okay. Um, is still not okay uh, because again he has no clue on what we uh, really deal with. Is it an integer or a string, etc. So this is really not a good solution. So what do we have in PHP? In fact, historically we have something called annotation. We used to um, add some metadata to our code. Um, and in fact, there is some uh, specific annotation for using generics. Uh, so we will try to uh, see how it works. But annotation comes with some limits. Uh, first, the syntax has comment. 
I don't know for you, but me, I don't like this very much. We have no, almost no syntax highlighting. We have, we are, we have no um, autocompletion. Uh, this is kind of difficult to read and to write. Well, I'm not a big fan. Um, so, well, we have to, to do with that. So let's talk about the ecosystem and what it can give us. Because I remind you that uh, PHP um, PHP commenter um, comment PHP doc uh, are not used at all by uh, PHP. Um, it won't read any PHP doc. So how does it work? In fact, our tools like IDE and uh, Static Con Analyzer will um, use this annotation to uh, emulate the function, the, f the way that generics could, uh, could work. So uh, first of all, with the PHP Storm support, we, I stole this uh, GIF on the JetBrain website, so guilty. But uh, you can see that we have some auto-completion here without any, you know, at var annotation. And this is quite cool for the developer experience, right? <coughs> so let's uh, look for what kind of annotation we have. First of all, the most important annotation, I think, is a template, which will allow you to uh, define a template of generic. And then once you define it, you can use it everywhere. So here, I have exactly the same uh, function as before, but now with some uh, PHP doc. The code will work perfectly, and then and now I use PHP stand, and it's in no error. Why? Because now it knows that, uh, for example, in the last line, it knows that I give him an array, so $R4 will be an array too. So no error for, for him. Well, if I mess with my code or my PHP doc declaration, for example, here, I don't return the same type as I can have in parameters. The, code, the PHP code itself will work perfectly, in fact, uh, but maybe buggy, but it will work. Um, and um, PHP stand will find there is an error here, pot potentially a bug, because um, uh, if I gave him an integer, I will receive an array of integer, and this is not what I declare. So mm, be careful; he, he will warn us. So this is quite cool again for the safe for for the safety and for uh, the developer experience. Well, we can define a template at a class level or any interface or trait, uh, etc., and uh, then use it everywhere. Of course, we can have more than one template. Uh, here, I can define two templates. But be careful. It could be quite difficult to understand if you have too much template in a class. So um, be careful. Uh, of course, it's uh, quite rare. You have to. You can deal with all the type of of the earth. So um, here, you can define um, a small um, area of uh, of type you can handle by using the keyword off. And here, I can say that um, my template will be an exception or something more specific than an exception. So here, I can give a new logic exception, and PHP stand will be happy. I, I will have some auto-completion uh, with my IDE, so I'm very happy. Uh, if I mess again with, uh, with my code, my PHP code will work perfectly, but uh, my tools will warn me that I can have a potential issue here, because this is not what I declare in my annotation. So again, uh, safer and uh, smoother for the developer experience. Now we have the pseudo type class string, which will represent the fully qualified class name. So here, if I uh, declare that the parameter will be a class string, um, and if I give him, uh, if I give it a, a fully, quali fully qualified class name, I will get my object. And uh, again, PHP stand will be happy, and my auto my IDE will give me auto completion and so on. Exactly the same code, which will work in production, of course, uh, but without annotation. PHP stand will say, "Oh, 
I don't know if you have right to do that, so you will warn me uh, of a potential issue. Um, now we have um, the at implements um, annotation. So here we have uh, an interface uh, for a collection, which will handle a payment mean collection, and I define a, a template at the interface uh, level. Uh, then I have an implementation of this interface, which will handle only the asynchronous payment mean. <coughs> so I can define that uh, my template will be only an async payment mean, you know, and not um, and not a synchronous payment mean, for example. Here. So if, for example, my get method will answer uh, will return a bank transfer, which is an asynchronous payment mean, uh, all my tool will be okay. PHP Stan is happy, and I will get some auto completion here. If I mess something uh, and I do not return uh, a bank transfer but a credit card, which is a synchronous payment mean, well, my, mm, again, my tools will be able to warn me that there is a potential issue here. Exactly the same thing for class inheritance, so not uh, with uh, at uh, implement but with at extend. So I will go quick on this example. But you can find the slide and watch it uh, later. <coughs> now we will introduce um, two little concepts like uh, called covariance and contravariance. It um, basically uh, means that uh, if you have uh, a class and you want to go to a child class, this process uh, is called covariance and the reverse process is called contravariance when you have something specific and you want something and you go to something less specific. In fact, there is some rules in PHP to handle covariance and contravariance. And since PHP 7.4, we can use covariance on return type and contravariance on argument type. What does it mean? Uh, here is an example to illustrate contravariance. I have uh, a class called async payment min, which implements a payment min. I have another class called async payment processor, which will process async payment, asynchronous payment. And this method, uh, uh, and there is a method which can take in argument an async payment mean. <coughs> if I have a concrete implementation of this processor, like a bank transfer, which will uh, process bank transfer payment, I can have either, of course, the same definition as the parent class, so uh, process async payment mean, but I can only have, uh, I can also have process payment mean, so something less specific, okay? This is okay for PHP, since PHP 7.4. Well, but in fact, this is not so interesting for me, because here, my bank transfer payment processor, I know I will only handle bank transfer payment, okay? So, in fact, I want, uh, I would like something more specific and not less specific. So, I want to give to the process method a bank transfer as a payment mean. But PHP does not allow that, um, and for some good reason, uh, often. But here, it's, it's kind of safe. So, um, PHP stand will be uh, not okay for that, and PHP itself also. So, how can, how can we use uh, generics to solve that kind of issue? Here, I have my, the same class, but I define uh, a generic parameter t, which is only a payment min, or something uh, more specific. And in my concrete implementation of bank transfer payment processor, I will set my uh, template t as a bank transfer. And in my PHP code, of course, I get the same definition uh, than in my parent class. And uh, so PHP is happy. My tools, uh, so uh, PHP stand and uh, my ID like PHP storm will be happy too. So this is really good for the developer experience again. Uh, now let's talk about some 
uh, quick specificity about uh, our tools, like uh, PHP Stand and Psalm. Uh, in fact, you can see in sometimes uh, some specific annotation uh, prefix with Psalm or PHP Stand. Uh, it is both compatible. Um, uh, in fact, it was uh, created because um, they both handle generics annotation, um, support generics annotation before PHP Storm, and to avoid some mess in the type system, like you know, if you if you write at return or at param with a T, PHP Storm will be oh, what is this type? So to avoid that, we have some some uh, kind of. Um, of annotation. Now it is uh, way less important because PHP Storm support is really better than ever. So, is it perfect what we saw? Well, first of all, we have no runtime overhead. So, this is quite cool uh, because, um, like I said, um, PHP doc are not read at all by PHP. So, this is quite cool about the functional coverage of the support of uh, all annotation we saw. This is quite cool too. We can do a lot of things with this annotation. Be careful because your annotation, your PHP doc, will become a kind of source of truth, at least for your tools. So if you mess it, maybe you can have some misleading sometimes. Also, well, it's a matter of taste, but now we have some PHP code, uh, we have some annotation and attributes. So if you have some complex uh, annotation definition for generics, plus the PHP, the PHP code, plus the attribute, it could be something difficult to read and to, mm, into, into uh, our files. So yeah. Uh, but uh, keep in mind that you have no obligation to use uh, generics at all, if you don't need to. And just a simple uh, example I found somewhere uh, of uh, generics definition. You, ca you can see, in fact, this is almost more difficult to understand the generics annotation here than the code itself. So it, mm, it could become really difficult to, to, to read and write, in fact. But keep in mind that it's not really meant for a user, at least for a human. Um, it is really meant to, to our tools and to improve our um, uh, to improve our developer experience. So, uh, to end this, let's see some Symfony's example. Uh, I'm more uh, Symfony guy than a Laravel guy, so I wonder if Symfony uh, code base use uh, generics. So, first of all, I go to I went to uh, GitHub, check some pull requests, uh, looking for generics. And in fact, there is a lot of pull requests. Well, I cheat a little bit because uh, I just type generics uh, in the search bar and gave me that. But in fact, that <laughs> this is not uh, all related to generics, but OK. Um, and which component uh, have generics in Symfony? In fact, there is a lot of uh, components because you know Symfony is not only a full stack framework. It's also um, um, a lot of uh, autonomous components we can use. And uh, well, I check for some uh, some components, uh, and I found I find uh, found uh, generics um, in a lot of them. Uh, I just uh, add some example here, and so let's look uh, into into concrete example of um, using generics. Well, the first example uh, here is uh, the passport class, which is part of the security part of Symfony. Uh, and uh, which will bear some authentication data, um <coughs> and then you can you can see that they define a, a template T page, uh, which could which could be only a page interface or a concrete implementation of this, and we can see the pseudotype class string is used, and so. Um <coughs> With this code, our tools like PHP Storm and PHP Stand, etc., will be able to know what exact uh, implementation we have uh, in return of this method. Not only a badge interface, but the real implementation. So, for the developer experience, is really cool. It's really cool. Now, a uh, really important, I think, um, component is the serializer component. And here is uh, the, uh, the interface. 
in fact, when you deserialize uh, a string uh, and give it um, a fully qualified class name as a second parameter, you will have uh, the object and the auto-completion of the object you want to deserialize. This is not magical, of course. This is because of the annotation here. And you can see this is not so easy, in fact, to read the annotation. There are two templates. Um, of the first one of type object, uh, one of type of pseudo type string, uh, of type string, sorry, uh, or pseudo type class string, which represent the same type as the first template. With that, we know that by giving uh, dollar type a fully qualified class name, we will get an object uh, of this type. Otherwise, we just don't know. So you see, it quite could be quite complicated, in fact. But again, it will uh, improve the ex developer experience. Here, another um, important um, example for the container bag interface. And then, uh, again, you will uh, have um, uh, more information about the, the return of the resolve value here. <coughs> One thing I didn't um, tell yet is that uh, in the PHP core class uh, itself, there is some uh, um, generics. So for example, if you implement the iterator aggregate um, PHP core class, um, and by using the at implement annotation, you will be able to, I don't know, loop uh, onto your helper set and have some auto-completion, depending, of course, of what you what there is in your uh, helper set. So again, this is really cool for the developer experience, without any PHP doc, in fact. Now it's time to conclude. And I, uh, this is the, the chain of volcano where I, live, uh, where I live. So you can see this is amazing. Um, Generics are an important concept of any programming language. Uh, it can allow us uh, to, to manage some uh, collection, of course. This is really the main usage here. Uh, this is not native in PHP and won't be native ever, uh, probably, at least. But uh, thanks to the community and um, the tooling we have in PHP, which, by the way, is really awesome, <coughs> in comparison of in other languages. Uh, we can use generics when uh, we need to. So thank you for being here. And um, I can take any question if you have now or later in the conference. And you can find the slide again here. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, throw yeah. catch box, please. Um, this one? Yep. Um, I will try to. Yeah. Perfect. Nice throw. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have a question about uh, name collision. Because. About uh, what? Name collision. Uh, because when we use uh, implement uh, annotation, we give a specific name of a yeah. type like T. Yeah. And uh, when uh, we import uh, some interface or something like that in the IDE, yeah. in the, our code base, and when we import the different classes, interfaces with the same name of template, like yeah. T, can we use uh, some al alias for it or something like that? Or do we have a name collision? Well, uh, it's a very good question, but in fact, it depends. It depends on the usage. Because something I didn't tell is uh, when you use the implement annotation, in fact, you can set the type you want for the, for the template, but you can still uh, propagate the, the, the template. So you, are, you can still use a, another template um, you know, annotation. Um, that being said, um, if you have, uh, um, you can define. Um, so, uh, what I want to do, what I want to tell you, is that uh, if you have um, 
You, can, you can't have uh, the same, of course, template name in the same context, but in two different contexts, so in two different class, of course you can. And what is important is the value you gave in uh, at, um, at the uh, instantiation of your object. So th this doesn't um, should uh, be a problem. OK, thanks. I hope it, it uh, answered to your question. Well, thanks. But uh, if you want, question later, I can, uh, of course, uh, you can go to see me and uh, we can talk about it. Thank you.